Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaw here, and it's time for another breakfast with Blaw. And today I'm having Greek yogurt, frozen blueberries, and almond butter. Well, let's talk about squats. And one of the problems we have with exercise selection when we're discussing these things, and when you get up and say something like, it actually doesn't matter which one of these you pick, uh, the results are all pretty much going to be the same. It's not going to impact how much quad and glute and everything else that you uh, build or develop or anything else, that they're universally interchangeable in different styles of squats. People get really upset. And it's, and it's like they have this deep emotional investment in believing that this style of squat one style of squat works more quad than the other. And it's really puzzling, you know, because these people will flat out reject any data that you have on it, and they'll say, well, that, that research is all bad. All of it, right, it's all bad. And their evidence is always anecdote. Right, their evidence is always anecdote without them understanding but their anecdote, even if it's true, uh, doesn't disprove it. What do I mean? They will say that, well, Olympic lifters tend to have really big quads. It's not like they have the biggest quads on the planet. Either they don't out of any, any people out there who lift. Uh, <laughs> it just makes it funny. They usually have big quads, though, and they're right. They usually do. And why wouldn't they? They do lots of squatting. But the chain of logic is because Olympic lifters do a lot of high bar squats and front squats and they all have big quads, therefore those type of squats work the quads more. And any argument you make, doesn't matter how many studies you have on hypertrophy, EMG, whatever, they're convinced they're right. And anyone who's looked at the logic for a minute should be laughing. should be laughing right now like that that should be comical and here's here's why if you have three variables a b c d or four or four a b c d and the research shows that all four of them produce the same results right that all of those will create this result relatively equally and your evidence is these people over here use A and B, not C or D, and they got the result. Of course they did. Of course they did. Why wouldn't they? If A, B, C, and D work, anyone who did A and B showing that it, it worked doesn't disprove the original point. It supports it. It supports the argument because it showed A and B work. It in no way diminishes the ability of, of point C or D to work. And what could we call these in this case? Uh, high bar squats, front squats, low bar squats, safety bar squats, whatever, whatever other bar we want to use. That's not evidence against the others working it's just evidence that some of them work because when we go look at the the data they're all pretty much the same they're the same the lower body activation of all of these squats is the same when we look at quads and we look at glutes okay the only thing that changes is the width the width of your stance will affect more adductor Right, if you go wider, you will work more adductor. So when you hear people say stuff like, oh, well, a low bar squat is more hip dominant. Well, no, it's not. It actually isn't. The stance width is. And it's because a lot of people prefer a narrower stance traditionally. Use a narrower stance on high bar squatting and a wider stance on low bar squatting. 
some people find it easier to get a wide stance with low bar. That's it. That's the reason there's a difference in the hips. Or the groin. But it's not the bar placement. It's the foot placement. They all work the quad the same though. Right? The stance doesn't change how much quad you work. Or even seem to change how much glute. Just a doctor. But all three of those muscles get a lot of stimulation from squatting. The quads get less than the other two in any style of squat, by the way. Someone wanted the most the biggest quads possible. I don't know that squatting would be the primary focus. If I were to prescribe it to them. Incidentally, everyone goes on and on about how massive my quads are. Squats are not really always my primary tool for building them. I use a lot, a lot of other exercises. All right. The lower body involvement on these is the same. When we start looking at it, if stance is kept constant, the overwhelming amount of the research shows that a high bar squat, a low bar squat, a front squat, a safety bar squat, train your legs the same. They're all interchangeable for that purpose. But by that same token, because those are the primary movers, what we also know is that any exercise that increases the size of the glutes, the adductors, or the quads, preferably all three, will usually make you stronger at the squat because you hypertrophied the primary movers. All right? And hypertrophy is the biggest factor in, in how strong you are on a squat. That says me, says the data. So this also applies in other directions. Right? Stance is the only thing that affects our ratios of how we work the lower body, not bar placement. And because again, keeping in mind a safety bar is a different bar placement. All four of those bar placements have been tested the leg activations the same. Stance is the only thing that matters. And stance doesn't even affect the quads. It just affects other things like the adductors you know, and the hips. It doesn't affect the quads. So in other words, you can get the same quad development doing any of these things. It doesn't matter. And people have to remember with their logic, you know, when you find several things that work the same, right? they all work, you using one or seeing someone else use one of those and getting that result in no way proves that it's superior to the others. It just proved what we already knew that it produces that result, just like the others others do. So think this stuff through when you start uh, arguing these things, guys. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.